Hello, everybody, and welcome to this webinar, which is to discuss the impacts of the Newton Katipchalebi Fund in addressing the impacts of climate change. My name's Nick Mellers. I'm a regional manager for the UK's Science and Innovation Network, based at the British Consulate General in Istanbul. Now, as we all know, climate change is affecting every country in the world. It's disrupting national economies and affecting lives and livelihoods, especially for the most vulnerable. We can all see that weather patterns are changing, sea levels are rising, and weather events are becoming more extreme. Now, if left unchecked, climate change could cause average global temperatures to increase by more than three degrees Celsius, which would exacerbate storms and disasters and could cause food and water scarcity. And doing nothing would cost us a lot more than if we took action now. We have an opportunity now to take actions that could lead to more jobs, more prosperity, and better lives for us all, all while reducing greenhouse gas emissions and building climate resilience. The next few weeks are going to be crucial in deciding whether and how the world takes action. We're very proud that the United Kingdom will host the 26th United Kingdom United Nations Climate Change Conference of the Parties, or COP26, in Glasgow from the end of this month. Now, the COP26 summit is going to bring countries together from all around the world to try to accelerate climate action. We're going to try and work with the international community together around four main goals. First, we're aiming to secure global net carbon zero by the middle of this century and keep to keep any increases in global temperatures to under 1.5 degrees Celsius. Second, we're going to try to increase support for adaptation so that we can protect our communities and natural habitats from the worst impacts of climate change. Developed countries are going to work together to mobilize finance to support developing countries and finally, we are going to work to make the rules that will accelerate action against the climate crisis. But if any of this is to succeed, we need science and technology to step up and provide the solutions that will make it possible for the world to lower our carbon emissions. And so I'm delighted to introduce this series of webinars, which will demonstrate the impact of a number of successful uh, joint research projects funded by uh, the UK and Turkish governments under the Newton Katip Chalebi Fund. We will talk about our speakers' experiences, the problems they're addressing with their research and their achievements. The Newton Fund is a unique program that aims to build research and innovation partnerships between 17 countries around the world to support economic development and social welfare and to tackle global challenges. The grants under the Newton Katip Chalebi Fund include research projects, PhD fellowships, mobility grants, innovation projects, and more. In Turkey, the UK is working with the Scientific and Technological Research Council of Turkey, or TUBITAC, as the main local partner under the fund since 2014. And since 2014, we've provided over 29.8 million pounds to more than 450 projects. I'll introduce our speakers in just a moment. Um, but as we go along, please do feel free to ask any questions to our speakers via the question and answer section at the bottom of your screen. And we'll pick some of those out uh, at the end to ask to our speakers. So today I'm very happy to welcome our two esteemed speakers who won the Newton Country Prize last year with their project entitled Lego Construction System of Green Structural Components for Low Cost Housing. Uh, and they are Professor uh, Ashraf Ashur from the University of Bradford, uh, who is the co-private invest investigator of the UK team. Uh, Professor Ashur has worked in many research projects uh, sponsored by local, uh, national and international research organizations. He has co-authored uh, and authored more than 200 journal and conference papers and is ranked among the top 0.6% uh, of scientists in civil engineering according to a Stanford University uh, global database. Our second speaker 
is Professor Dr. Mustafa uh, Shah Maran uh, of Hacettepe Tepe University, uh, who is the co-private investigator of the Turkish team. He is a member of several technical committees, uh, including the American Concrete Institute, the American Society of Civil Engineering, the US Transportation Research Board, and the Turkish Society of Civil Engineering, and he has published over 100 peer-researched articles in major scientific journals and conferences. Um, so Professor Ashur, Professor uh, Shamaran, welcome. Uh, before, I, before I ask some questions about the projects, is, is there anything else you would like to say about yourselves by, by way of introduction? No, thank you very much for, for this very good introduction. I mean, it's uh, covering everything. And uh, let me as well thank you for giving us this opportunity to discuss and present our research uh, project. And, uh, and thanks as well for taking the initiative to promote such uh, important issues related to climate change and other uh, United Nations uh, sustainable development goals. So thank you very much for this. Okay. I also thank you for all of you. By the way, good afternoon for everybody. Uh, so we will be ready to answer all of the questions. Perfect. Thank you very much. So, professors, your project won the Newton Country Prize last year. Can you tell us about the issue that your project was addressing and why it is important that a solution is found to this issue? Okay. May I start first? Uh, yes, please. Yeah, yeah you can go, please. Uh, Good afternoon again for everybody. Thank you very much, Nick. Uh, so our project uh, proposes uh, solutions to eliminate the use of both uh, Portland cement and the clean aggregates completely uh, through the production of what we call green concrete components, which is basically uh, based on the construction and demolition waste. Maybe we can use the short term CDW after now. And we also multiply the benefits of our entirely uh, CDW based green concretes through increasing their carbon dioxide capturing capacity from the atmosphere in the form of the flue gas and using them in the development of demountable building components allowing Lego-like construction and future views. Uh, I'm sure that Professor uh, Ashraf is going to provide more uh, with, uh, information about this Lego-like construction because he's one of the most well-known experts in this area. And finding solutions to these issues are important. If you consider the traditional concrete is the second most used substances on earth after the water, and its ingredients are quite troublesome to obtain, to manufacture. Uh, for example, uh, just for Portland cement, which is the main uh, binding material for concrete, and we use in massive quantities to build our infrastructures and structures. Uh, it is responsible around 9% of global man-made carbon dioxide. Uh, it is a huge uh, amount. And uh, concrete also incorporates filler uh, materials called aggregates, which act as the skeleton uh, material and very carbon emissive and energy intensive and non-eco-friendly to extract it because uh, they are all obtained from the natural sources. Uh, meanwhile, construction demolition waste is one of the largest waste stream in almost all countries uh, around the world, which require uh, proper tackling. Uh, for example, Turkey anticipates huge amounts of construction demolition waste generation in the following 20 years within the scope of the newly planned urban transformation law and has very limited knowledge and experience in affecting uh, CDW recycling technique and methodologies. So with our project, uh, we come up with the state-of-the-art solutions to effectively tackle the CDW issue without creating additional waste, requiring new materials production and causing uh, extra carbon dioxide emissions. Okay, okay. Let me let me add a few things here and recap. I, I need I need here to show you the scale 
of the issues we're trying to solve. I mean, we, as as you mentioned, Nick, at the start, we are scientists and we're trying to, to do our bit in helping the, 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 those major issues. The, the first issue, as Mustafa mentioned, is the construction and demolition waste. To, to, to emphasize the scale of the amount of construction and demolition waste in, in, in Turkey, for example, as Mustafa said, I understand uh, the, the, there are some uh, plan now to demolish around uh, 6 million uh, uh, structures and building uh, by 2040. Uh, this is almost uh, one third of the full uh, building stock in Turkey. And the, the, obviously this is going to create massive amount of construction and demolition waste. Latest uh, DEFRA report, uh, the Department for Environment, Food and Rural Affairs report as well, shows the scale of the problem in, in, in here in UK. Around 200 million tons of waste being generated in 2018. Around 30% of this uh, construction and demolition waste. Similar situation in Europe. Uh, uh, with the massive amount of construction and demolition waste, 30% are uh, generated due to construction and demolition waste. <clears throat> uh, 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 currently, we made, we made some good progress in terms of recycling of such construction and demolition waste, and every country obviously taking their bet and taking their action, uh, not to, to, to damp this in landfills, causing uh, lots of environmental and possible uh, health issues. Uh, one main concern regarding the, 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 the approach we trying to, to do at the moment is it's almost down, down cycling of this construction demolition waste. So it's been used in a sub base in roads, for example. Uh, this uh, uh, hopefully helping the environment, uh, I mean, in terms of saving landfills. But the main issue, uh, we need to serve more than one uh, uh, goals of the United Nations uh, uh, sustainable development. And this is what we're trying to do. Rather than downcycling uh, the, the, the construction and demolition waste, we're trying to use this construction and demolition waste for more upcycling. And by doing this, we are uh, uh, trying to save uh, uh, lots of CO2 emission coming from cement industry. Uh, uh, by doing this, we serving many of the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, for example, goal number 13 related to climate action, uh, goal number 11 uh, related to sustainable cities, and uh, indirectly we addressing as well goal, goal number three of the United Nations, good health and well-being, uh, by obviously reducing and minimizing uh, any land filling of construction and demolition waste. One major contribution we're making, as Mustafa mentioned, it's related to the, 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 the structure system we're following now in a reinforced concrete uh, structure, which is at the end uh, of life of any reinforced concrete structure, we generally demolish such a structure and this creating lots of demolition waste, as we mentioned, the, the scale of the issue so far. The, the approach we're trying to, to, to follow to have a Lego uh, type structure for reinforced concrete uh, structural element in a very similar way to steel uh, industry. Steel industry, when, when a structure uh, uh, completed the, the life, uh, uh, we normally dismantle and uh, uh, dismantle various structural elements and reusing them. But this is not the current practice in reinforced concrete. And this is creating lots of construction and demolition waste. So we're trying in, 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 uh, in this project uh, to complement the development of green uh, concrete by uh, producing a, a demountable, a legal-like uh, structure. So this is, this is one uh, very important uh, uh, additional contribution to, uh, so hopefully in future, when a structure finish uh, its life, we don't have to create more construction and demolition waste. We can uh, disassemble uh, such a structure by uh, sort of disconnecting, disassembling, demounting various structural members, and then we can reuse them in, free, in future. This is again, uh, saving lots of uh, embodied energy in reinforced concrete structures. And uh, importantly as well, the owners, of such reinforced concrete structure can, can return uh, their assets uh, by 
uh, reselling this. So we 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 trying to uh, uh, give many uh, solutions or and uh, addressing the sustainability from all the pillars of sustainability uh, in terms of the the. The, the in terms of the economic side, in terms of the societal side, in terms of the environmental side, rather than just focusing on one pillar. So that's that's uh, that's what I can add here. Thank you very much, Nick. Perfect. Thank you very much both for those those answers. And I'm really struck um, by some of the figures you gave. Um, uh, in particular, that concrete could be responsible for up to nine percent of, uh, of of carbon emissions. Um, uh, I mean, if I can just, if I, if, if, if I can follow up um, to talk a bit more about, about the specifics of, of your project. Um, how, how did the funding uh, that came from uh, the Newton Katip Chalebi Fund help you to, um, to, uh, to design your project to, to address some of these issues? Could I start, Mustafa, for, to answer this uh, question? In, in, in fact, we looked at <clears throat> the, the three major issues we, we just explained and discussed in the, in the first uh, part of this question. So first thing we, we, we trying to achieve by the, by the Newton Fund and the, this research project and the collaboration between Bradford and the Hajateba University, we trying to, to develop an eco-friendly uh, geopolymer concrete. And uh, uh, this uh, concrete, and this is the, the, the main contribution we're trying to make, are uh, produced uh, mainly from construction and demolition waste. There were some uh, research work done in uh, uh, geopolymer concrete previously, but here we're focusing on construction and demolition waste. Uh, the main uh, 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 sort of characteristic, main features of this geopolymer concrete compared with the conventional concrete it will be less energy intensive. So we're going to reduce the CO2 emission from cement production, more economical and uh, uh, easy to follow. Uh, another objective we're looking at, uh, and still we're making good progress with this, is CO2 capture uh, and storage in, uh, the, in the recycle aggregate. Uh, with the recycle aggregate, we, we got from the construction and demolition waste. Everybody is aware how serious is the situation of the CO2 in, in the atmosphere at the moment. So we trying to capture such and help in, 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 in solving the current issues we're facing, not just the future actions. The, the, the other aim and the other uh, achievement we uh, planning to make uh, from the, the previous Newton Fund and the, this Newton Prize as I mentioned, producing the Lego-like demountable uh, uh, structural element. And this hopefully will minimize and reduce any future construction and demolition waste. One other uh, very important uh, objective, uh, this is going to happen in Hajateba University. We're going to have a, a, a field demonstration, uh, uh, which is a, a structure, a one-story building uh, of around 100 meters square. So it's a typical uh, building for people in need. And this is being built based on the geopolymer concrete we're producing and the demountable structure we are researching in. And hopefully this will extend the impact of the project. Hopefully it will encourage many uh, industry to come and work with us and uh, help in, in, in commercializing such a, a finding. And most importantly as well, it's going to be a, an affordable housing which will target a people in need. So this is a, some sort of summary of the achievement. We, uh, we almost a, a, a done a good number of those and the progressing and hopefully we can make a, the, the, achieve all the targets by the end of the project. Okay, uh, so let me add something uh, deep, uh, near. Uh, as we have already mentioned, uh, we are basically dealing with the uh, reduction of the use of the raw materials, and we would like to maximize the use of the waste. And in our uh, projects, we basically concentrate on the construction demolition waste. This is our actually uh, start point. Uh, but uh, more specifically, as uh, Ashraf said, 
uh, our aims, uh, we would like to provide fast, durable housing uh, or accommodation through uh, a Lego-like construction feature for in-need people, uh, such as poor uh, slum dwellers and refugees. Uh, they, they really live under the basic standards of living and commonly experiences extraordinary situations like earthquakes and floods. This is really very important for our country because which is mainly located in high risk earthquake area and hosting millions of refugees uh, whose, whose accommodation or housing is a big burden uh, make entire and uh, for for our national economy. So, uh, with the proposition of the Lego-like houses made entirely 100% out of the uh, CDW, a reinforced concrete structure can be easily and safely dismantled and reused whenever it is needed in the future. This is one of the uh, basic achievement also, not only construction and we are planning to design by considering the demolition issue as well. Uh, this is a big problem uh, for all around the world, not only in Turkey. Uh, in addition to this uh, scientific or uh, uh, social uh, achievements, our research also aims at making partnership uh, and contact with the universities in countries leading in science such as UK for promoting the economic development and welfare of the countries and shifting their stories one another by focusing on what is missing and urgent. I think I can add this additional information. Thank you very much, Professor Sharma. And I mean, it's, it's really interesting because with, with one project, you're, you're addressing a number of, of challenges and, and needs, in fact. Um, and uh, Professor Sean mentioned um, that I think you, you have a, a, a demonstration house um, that is, is coming online and will help to sort of demonstrate the, um, you know, the, 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 the difference that, that this kind of technology can make. Uh, and Professor Shamara, you also talked about how this was leading to international partnerships as well um, as, as sort of the scientific element. But could, could, I, could you talk a little bit more about some of the, the outcomes and the impacts that the, the project work has had so far? Okay, so let me start this question. But uh, as, as Ashraf mentioned, we have started, uh, I think, uh, three or four years ago for this collaboration. Uh, and so far, we have developed first the new generation CDW-based uh, construction material based on, uh, again, CDW entire 100%. This is the, uh, this include only 100% Portland cement free uh, geopolymer, we call geopolymer in, in technical term, binders and green concrete metals manufactured by the combination of developed geopolymer binders and CDW based recycled aggregates. Uh, which has a comparable mechanical and durability characteristic as in conventional concrete. This is one of our first achievement. And uh, as far as uh, our knowledge, there is no research groups they have uh, with these amount of the waste uh, they produce with this uh, quality of the metals. This is our, uh, one of our achievements. And in the current practice, uh, construction demolition waste is mostly landfilled in open areas or recycled via a very low tech approach of direct crushing and non-structural filling or road bases or sub bases. And in our projects, instead of using uh, this method for a very low technical application, uh, we started to use in high value as a high value added product such as structural concrete. And when we consider the cost of the uh, conventional concrete, uh, Portland cement uh, representing more than 45% of the cost of the traditional concrete. And the clean aggregate uh, constituting around 70 to 80% of the materials volume. And the development of 
uh, entirely construction, demolition, waste-based binder and clean aggregate free green concrete uh, has less uh, has that reductions in the cost of the material around 50%. This is our uh, initial calculations and we are expecting to increase uh, the income with the uh, improvements in the technology and utilization of uh, large amounts of CDW diverted from the open landfill areas led to cost reductions related not only the matters related to the storage landfilling rental uh, land payments of construction demolition waste and workmanship as well another uh, achievements if we consider the production of uh, portland cement uh, it requires more than 1.5 ton of raw materials. These are the clay and limestone. Uh, and it, it, production of one ton of Portland cement releases around one ton of the carbon dioxide to the atmosphere. And uh, plus natural aggregate quarrying is problematic in terms of energy and environmental wise. The green concrete developed in our project significant contribution in reducing the need of the raw material, workmanship, energy, together with the some additional uh, benefits. And uh, Ashraf will provide more information about the achievements related with the uh, use of the Lego-like structures, because he's basically an expert in the area of the structures. But uh, if I summarize the newly developed demountable construction stem, uh, it will reduce the overall cost of the construction nearly 30% compared to the conventional application. And you can make any changes during the service life of the structures. You can add new wall, uh, new room, or remove some walls. These are the additional advantages of the uh, new structural system that are planning to construct. Uh, so my answers are all for this question. Okay, thank you very much. Let me let me add a few things. I mean, uh, Mustafa, uh, in a very comprehensive way, explained the, the technical uh, contribution and technical uh, achievement we have done so far in the material side. Uh, what, what I'm going to do now, just briefly touch up on the, the, the structural side. And I'll mention as well the, the impact dissemination output uh, we achieved so far. And uh, you may think this is a, a major or too many achievement, but this is how international col collaboration can achieve and can bring. Uh, without any doubt, the, the, the fantastic team, research team uh, in Hajateba uh, led by Mustafa are very uh, active, very keen, same as the, the, the research team here in Bradford. We, we believe in what we're doing. That's why we are progressing this. We believe in, in, in we need to sort out those issues. So I, I'm, I'm very pleased as, as, as an academic to, to report all those achievements and uh, uh, as well as the, the other dissemination activities. So for example, if, if, I, if I just briefly touch on the technical uh, achievement we have uh, done so far in terms of the, the, the connection uh, uh, the dry connection, as, as I mentioned earlier, we need we need a reinforced concrete structure uh, at the end of life to we, we should be able to dismantle such a structure. We should be able rather than demolishing the structure and do down cycling or any other type of uh, uh, recycling. We need to be able to uh, uh, dismantle such a structural element. So uh, in both uh, uh, universities at, at Hegeteba and here in Bradford, we uh, developed uh, some good uh, uh, dry connections to connect various elements in Hegeteba. They looked at beams, column connection. Here we looked at the slab connection and we uh, managed to achieve some very good results. Uh, 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 comparable, uh, showing comparable behavior with the uh, initial uh, with connection normally uh, happening and uh, as, as a current practice in industry. So if I start now talking about some of the output in terms of the dissemination and public uh, outreach, th this, this uh, webinar uh, 
is is one very important way uh, disseminating our uh, research results. And thank you very much for the new team funding and uh, for all people organized such seminar to 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 get uh, more uh, people involved within our a more scientific uh, community involving in our uh, research. In fact, I seen uh, one of the audience uh, sending us invitation to contribute to a book he writing about construction and demolition west, west. And obviously, we're going to look at this uh, invitation in a very positive way. Uh, uh, in terms of other dissemination and public outreach, we created various social media to disseminate uh, the project uh, uh, finding and project output, uh, including websites, for example, in both universities. We are at the moment working on the other social media, uh, uh, for example, YouTube to, 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 to show more about the experimental work and show more about the, 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 the field demonstration is going to happen in Hajateba. We, we're looking at LinkedIn as well. So all of those will be uh, hopefully very soon up and running those social media impact. We already produced uh, uh, three journal papers already published uh, uh, now in the, on the public domain. If anybody uh, from the audience want to look at the finding we, we have achieved so far. So uh, in the pipelines, two other papers, two scientific papers covering the, the finding being submitted and another four in preparation. So in total, we did manage uh, uh, to achieve a very good uh, research output uh, uh, around eight, nine papers. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, because of the, the two enthusiastic, two fantastic teams working in Hajateba and here in Bradford. Another, another dissemination activity, I just been invited a couple of weeks ago to give a, a talk for the public. This is, the, it wouldn't be very scientific, but for the public to get more awareness about the, the current climate uh, challenges we're facing. And that will be uh, at the end of this month, end of October, in, uh, in a forum organized by the Science uh, Media Museum. It's called the uh, Cafe Scientific. And uh, hopefully this will give the public uh, the opportunity to explore uh, the latest technology uh, uh, to tackle all the climate uh, uh, it changes and all the, the issues and all the finding we're doing at the moment. So hopefully this answer and the uh, completed answer for your uh, question, Nick. Brilliant, yes, thank you very much, um, both of you for those answers. I see we have got some questions uh, coming in on the chat bar, so I, I, I will turn to those um, in a moment. But but first, if, if I could just um, uh, ask, uh, uh, what, you know, in terms of uh, your motivation, um, Professor Ashur, Professor uh, Shamarin, your, your motivations, what, what was it that led you personally to want to, to do this study? And then once, once you found yourselves working together, how, how has the international aspect of the collaboration benefited your research? Let, let me answer this, Mustafa. I mean, uh, 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 the main, the main motivation, obviously, I as as academic, uh, I'm, I'm spending all my research career in structural engineering, construction material, uh, sustainable construction material. So, and uh, uh, we, uh, same as you, uh, we want to do our bit in developing the technology and science to uh, sort of uh, tackle all the, the global issues happening uh, around us. So that was a very, very, a, a, a important opportunity for me to start collaborating with uh, people. Uh, as I said, uh, I, I'm very pleased with the collaboration with Hajateba University. And, and this international collaboration added a very important dimension the, because we, we both in UK and Turkey facing very similar problem. In fact, everybody in the whole universe at the moment facing those problem and everybody doing their bits. So we felt we have to do uh, our bets to tackle uh, uh, such issues. Another uh, 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 sort of uh, uh, motivation to do this is the opportunity to give the opportunity for uh, the, the, the researchers working with us. Uh, I got here a, a couple of uh, researchers working with me in this project and Mustafa got a similar in Hajateba. 
and those are building some knowledge and uh, some training in such important area. And hopefully those will be future uh, scientists to, uh, to develop more uh, solutions and more technology to tackle the climate uh, change. In fact, one of the one of my uh, postdoc in this project, uh, she uh, did manage to guarantee uh, and uh, to to secure a, a lectureship uh, after this project, and she is very keen to carry on uh, research work in uh, on, on on such uh, uh, in, on such a topic. So, uh, uh, and another thing as well, which motivated us very much, myself, because we already started or we already had some. A collaboration before between uh, uh, Bradford and Hejateba. And when Mustafa mentioned the, the, the real uh, time demonstration uh, of the project, this failed demonstration, I find it a very, very interesting uh, 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 objective and target we should be working through to, to show the, the impact, to show the, the visibility, to show how our research could be uh, uh, shown at a very high TRL six or seven, for example, uh, 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 because most or, or, uh, or some some of the work, if it's just been in in the lab and we didn't show the, the final demonstration, it wouldn't attract uh, people from industry to, to look into this and try to uh, uh, to to sort of give give us a hand and commercialize our our work into industry and into practice. So if I finish, I would think I finish all what I want to raise here. Okay, let, let me add some, uh, some, something additional. Uh, so I would like to mention some specific reasons that we are uh, motivated as a Turkey. So we are uh, mainly motivated first uh, at first to combat the man-made carbon dioxide emissions. Uh, by developing Portland cement free green countries. Because uh, this situation is uh, more important for the Turkey because our country is ranked first in Europe and uh, sixth in the world in the Portland cement production. This is our, one of our main motivation to reduce the use of the Portland cement. And as I said uh, before, uh, under the near infrastructural and urban transformation law in Turkey, uh, we are planning to demolish and reconstruct nearly 6.5 million buildings, which is almost uh, one, uh, one third of our uh, total building stocks. And uh, as Turkey, we neither possess uh, effective ways to innovatively upcycle these huge amounts of the expected CDW from the planet demolition and reconstruction practices, no available land to store them all. Therefore, our another motivation uh, for us is to effectively upcycle the expected CDW and make economy, society, environment, and health-wise benefits. And as I mentioned uh, before, uh, as you all know, Turkey currently hosts nearly 4 million refugees from all around the world, basically from Syria. And they need proper shelter and accommodation. And by the way, the real number is uh, more likely to be much higher than this amount. And one of our motivation uh, is therefore centered on providing fast and durable housing for people or these people, which will not cost additional money resources and simultaneously to reduce the amount of waste going to landfills and carbon dioxide emissions. We can easily obtain this kind of the waste after the war in Syria. Not only in Turkey, we can design this kind of the structures uh, for these people in their countries as well. And in, in some in our Nifton funded projects, we are therefore developing completely demountable and CDW-based Portland cement and clean aggregate free structures with improved carbon dioxide uh, binding capability. You have one additional question regarding with the benefit of international collaboration. Uh, our Newton funded project gave us a real uh, opportunity uh, to come together as material scientists 
uh, from Turkey and structural engineers from the UK, and exchanging uh, their experiences in developing holistic uh, circular solutions to tackle the global uh, issue of CDW generation. In addition to our academic backgrounds and expertise, infrastructures available in both institutions, Bradford and Hacettepe University, well complemented each other. Uh, we, we really believe that collaboration formed between these two universities, where we are Newton Price, is exemplary in breaking the, the common trend in construction industry and strengthening the ties among the researchers working on construction materials and structural engineers. Brilliant. I'm, I'm really happy to hear that, Professor Shamar. And uh, uh, it's great to bring um, uh, countries together to work on these global challenges, but also to bring together different academic uh, disciplines. I think you can, you can gain a lot from, from these kinds of um, exchanges. Um, so let, let me ask now, um, you know, we've, we've heard uh, about the project, um, what you've achieved uh, so far. Could I ask um, a bit about your future plans um, around this, this collaboration? Um, I mean, it would be great to hear if you're, if you're planning any, any follow on research, but also um, just picking up on, on one of the questions in the chat bar. Um, you know, do you think there's any prospect that your project might be used in, in real life uh, construction projects? And I, I noted, um, uh, you said earlier that there could be a, a cost reduction for some of these materials of up to 30% uh, by using these, these methods. So I, I guess, you know, this, this kind of project must be attractive to industry. Um, and the things you just said, uh, Professor Shamaran, about the, the situation with refugees uh, in Turkey, um, must be quite uh, attractive to um, the development sector as well. So it would be great to hear about your, your future plans. Okay, uh, let, let me start this time first. Okay. Uh, thank you again. Uh, for, regarding with our future plans, uh, we think uh, we have made an excellent collaboration and created synergy in terms of academic specialism and infrastructure facilities. And the Newton Prize, this country prize has allowed Hacettepe University and Bradford University to establish strategic and long lasting partnership. This is our expectations and uh, we try to follow these objectives very closely. And we are certain uh, that this collaboration between both institutes in terms of the research and educational activities will continue. By the way, after these projects, we have uh, signed Erasmus uh, collaboration between the Bradford Univers University and Hacettepe University. This is one additional uh, achievements or uh, additional benefits after this uh, partnership. So both sides are very willing for further research collaborations on sustainability issue and extending our uh, partnership on multiple levels, such as governmental bodies, uh, different academic institutions, private sectors, and other stakeholders. In fact, uh, both institutions, Hacettepe and Bradford University, have started contacting different stakeholders to develop uh, new collaborative uh, studies. Uh, moreover, we have started to prepare uh, and coordinate new pro uh, project proposals, uh, Europe uh, Horizon project proposals, positioned on the sustainable construction activities, such as development of new generation construction methods with significantly improved thermal properties, acoustical properties, known materials suitable for 3D additive manufacturing, and uh, design methodologies for 3D printed construction elements among uh, other stakeholders. And we should that if we are going to complete the field demonstration, hopefully at the first quarter of the 2022, uh, we, we will uh, receive more attention from the different uh, stakeholders and governmental uh, agencies. And at that time, we will start uh, more effective 
e, collaboration with the other e, stakeholders as well. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm a bit aware of time, so I don't want to add too much. Uh, uh, but I mean, again, our our uh, our collaboration will will continue and last for far much longer. But just one thing, I need to mention. We already Mustafa already mentioned Erasmus Plus, but another another uh, uh, which already signed between the two universities. But another another uh, research project which is happening. Uh, to uh, sort of highlight the, the the collaboration and the work between the two universities, uh, 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 Bradford University, uh, with my uh, supervision, hosting one of Mustafa, uh, uh, academic member of staff, uh, Dr. Gorkan. He now is is a Marie Curie uh, fellow at the University of Bradford. The 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 the, the sponsorship coming from uh, Horizon 2020. And he's going to carry on working and developing uh, the, 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 the finding and the results more on this. Uh, one other uh, 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 sort of future uh, collaboration, uh, another uh, Marie Curie uh, doctoral training uh, uh, application. We're preparing it at the moment with uh, another uh, partners from Spain, from Belgium, and uh, from Switzerland, in addition to Bradford and uh, Hajateba in Turkey. And hopefully, if we are successful in getting the funding for this uh, Marie Curie uh, doctoral training, that will be a fantastic opportunity to train a very good number of uh, uh, sort of motivated dynamic researchers so they can take this further and uh, develop uh, more, uh, achieve more finding. And most important thing, as Mustafa said as well, we now uh, uh, trying to target industry. We need we need to have some knowledge transfer uh, partnership. So we uh, hopefully will be able to transfer our work, our development, our finding to tackle all the problems because we need we need people to take up uh, this research finding. I mean, industry mainly the people in construction and demolition waste industry, people in uh, concrete uh, manufacturing uh, sector uh, and in, in, in construction industry in general, to, to take up those uh, achievements we have done and try to get more uh, widespread, more wide application for such uh, achievement. I'll stop here, Nick, because I know your uh, time now is uh, pressing. Not at all. Thank you. Thank you very much, um, Professor uh, Ashur uh, and Professor Shamar. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm really pleased to hear that you've, you've got such uh, activist plans to, to continue the research and, and extend its impact. Um, it's, it's great to hear about the, the potential uh, Horizon uh, collaboration. Uh, we're really pleased that the UK will be participating in Horizon Europe um, uh, that, will, that will open this year. Uh, and so I hope there's there's lots of opportunities under under that framework as well. Yeah. Um, and you you spoke about the Mary Curie um, doctorships. Um, maybe maybe there are some uh, students listening to this presentation who who might be interested in in exactly that kind of uh, of, yeah. of, of opportunity. Um, so uh, let me have a quick look at the the questions and answers uh, the questions that we've got. Um, so uh, I'll, I'll ask this as, as um, uh, a quick question to Professor Ashur, maybe. Uh, where, where can we access the, the papers that have been issued um, from your research? Oh, the, the papers, uh, they are obviously published in, in, in the top international journals, uh, construction building materials and the building structures. Uh, I, 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 obviously, I, 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 can, I can provide the list of the papers, they are available. If, if I mean, obviously, the, the if you go to Scopus, for example, under my name or uh, Mustafa's name, you'll find the list of papers, especially the one related to geopolymer and construction and demolition waste. Those uh, three are available in, in on the public domain now. There is uh, one paper published on structures, as I mentioned, three papers already available now on the public domain. In addition, they are available in our a uh, Bradford Scholar free of charge. You can download them uh, uh, because again, we, we believe in the open access. Uh, if, if 
if the, the you don't have a subscription to such journals, we, we th there is one version of the paper available on Bradford Scholars. Uh, I don't know what's the best way to communicate the, the web link or uh, other information, but I, we could make them uh, uh, publicly available with uh, when, when you publish the, the video for this talk, I could provide all the information about this. Perfect. Let's do that. Yes. If, if you can send us a list when we publish the video, we can, yeah, we can link to them underneath, uh, then everybody can, can access them. Perfect. Thank you very much, Professor uh, Ashur. And um, so then to a more, a more open question, um, how can civil engineers contribute uh, towards tackling the problem of, of global warming? Uh, maybe, maybe we can start with Professor Shamal. Thank you. Uh, so actually, uh, there is no one answer for this question. Uh, for example, in our cases, uh, uh, to contribute the global warming issue and to reduce the carbon dioxide emissions, we basically uh, deal with the uh, subject of the use of the waste material in construction uh, and to develop the structural uh, concrete by using the west, uh, this waste material. And there are some additional ways uh, to help this issue. For example, if we are going to design the structures uh, in a good quality, and if we are going to extend the service life of the structures, for example, uh, in developing countries, uh, generally the economies depending on the constructing demolition, constructing demolition, this is not the good way uh, for in terms of the global warming because whenever we use the cement in high quantities, uh, it has a problem with the additional carbon dioxide emission and it has a problem with the use of the raw material. So for that reason, we need to design the structures in a well shape uh, to extend the service life of the structures. So by this way, uh, we can eliminate the use of the cement and the concrete in a high uh, amount. So in addition to this, there are uh, some additional ways, uh, for example, to use some uh, natural uh, or methods or uh, some wood structures uh, to these kind of the solutions. Uh, therefore, there are no uh, one, uh, there, are, there are several solutions to this problem. So uh, we just mentioned, uh, two of, uh, I just mentioned two of them here, but in addition to this, there are several additional solutions. Reduce the, uh, make a good plan or reduce the use of the uh, waste during the construction issue or something, some additional things uh, that can be easily solve this kind of the problem. Could I just add a few things here, Nick? I mean, because again, it's it sounds a very interesting question because I, I, I'm very happy people, uh, especially civil engineers, are aware of the problems and they want to tackle the problem. And we agreed at the start, each one of us, civil engineer, uh, the research councils, uh, everybody, industry, everybody has to, to do their bit. So hopefully we can tackle this. It's a global issue. So if i can give advice to civil to a civil engineer to 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 towards uh, contributing to the global warming and how we, how they can tackle such a problem one very important issue is start by uh, getting the knowledge the right knowledge uh, about the, the topic another thing when you, when you do any because civil engineer he's he's uh, the member of the construction and the civil engineering community so when you when you've been asked to design any structure, to, to do any work, you need to think of the sustainability. You need to consider the sustainability issue in your design. How much I'm going to transport materials, for example, shall I use local material rather than transporting and causing CO2 emission? This material is more sustainable in this situation. So let's, let's consider this. Let's focus on the uh, uh, reuse uh, better than uh, recycle, for example, because recycle will need energy, but reuse, you could reuse it straight away. Uh, uh, upcycling better than downcycling. So all, all those issues, uh, we, we need to get the knowledge across. And uh, thank, thanks very much for the, for the Newton uh, funding and giving us such opportunity to uh, get the message across to everybody, including civil engineering and the public as well. 
Perfect. Thank you very much both. And I, I think that's a really good reminder that, you know, for all of us, um, uh, as civil engineers, as any kind of engineer, as scientists, as citizens, um, you know, we all have a responsibility to think what, what personal contribution uh, can I make to this agenda, which, which affects uh, all of us. Um, so thank you. Um, so we will close uh, in just a second, but before I do, Professor Ashur, Professor Shamaran, are there any final thoughts you would like to share with us? Yeah, let me let me start. I mean, again, uh, 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 to, to finish off, I, I just would like to thank you very much for giving us this opportunity. Uh, and uh, obviously providing the financial support to, to carry out our project. One, one very important uh, point I need to raise uh, at the end of this uh, uh, presentation or webinar, we doing, uh, we made some progress in terms of uh, tackling the, the uh, ma some few major issues, but we are at a stage now where we need to look in a more uh, holistic, more, uh, sort of more advanced way, how we can uh, recycle. So rather than recycle, as I said, or downcycle, let's do upcycle. Let's uh, tackle a good number of the United Nations sustainable development goals rather than focusing on one goal. We, 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 we made lots of progress, as I said, in terms of recycling. But is the is a, is a, uh, action we're doing uh, uh, achieving the right uh, thing in terms of the overall uh, United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, or just focusing on one and ignoring the others. So this is this is my last uh, comment. Therefore, I'm hoping future research work will focus on more than one aspect and trying to look at the global holistic uh, approach rather than a, a very narrow uh, uh, one pillar of sustainability, for example. Okay. Uh, so, in concluding my remarks, uh, so I would like to re-emphasize uh, that the construction industry is a huge contributor to climate change, unfortunately, and our circular economy approach aims to drastically reduce the waste created and bring down the carbon dioxide emissions and reduce the negative environmental impact uh, while ensuring construction demands are met. So in this regard, the contribution of Nifton Price is of great importance. And uh, I would like to thank Nifton Country Price Committee and all of the uh, prize provider very much for the support given on behalf of all the students, researchers, and stakeholders involved in this project, both uh, in in the UK and the Turkish side. So we really appreciate the support the Newton program provide to make one of our dreams come to true. Thank you very much. Professor Shamar and Professor Ashur, thank you so much uh, for taking the time uh, to come here today and explain your project. We really appreciate it. Um, all the best of luck for the future. Uh, and we, we hope to stay in touch. Um, for everybody listening, um, we will have a, uh, a session uh, on Wednesday next week uh, uh, in similar format to this one. And we will host Dr. Uh, Sarifi uh, from the University of Birmingham and Dr. Babak uh, Verhedust from uh, Bursa Technical University to talk about their project, Knowledge Transfer and Capacity Building for Sustainable Water Pollution Management in Bursa in Turkey. Uh, so a full invite will be uh, circulated. Um, so we hope you can join us again next week. Uh, but for now, thank you again to our to our okay, guests. Thank you very much. No, and, thank you very much. Uh, <laughs> thank pleasure. you to everyone for listening. Goodbye for now. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, bye, Nick. Thank you very much. Bye, everybody. Thank Goodbye. you very much. Bye, bye.